Adrian Gonzalez, president of Adelante SEM and host of Talking Logistics. I'm here at the Quintic World Tour event in London, where executives from across many industries and companies are gathered together to learn and discuss a very timely and important topic in the industry. That is, achieving optimum supply chain performance. Joining me is Rob uh, Van Egmond, from the CEO of Quintic, to share some insights and perspectives from the conference so far. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you've you know, worked in the company for, for many years in a variety of different roles, including you know, CTO. Yeah. But what excites you the most moving forward in, in this new role? I think it's our exciting times in the world of supply chain, right? What you see right now is that the supply chain industry is booming. Uh, technology in the supply chain industry is booming, but also n using new technologies like uh, big data, analytics, uh, or as we summarize them, making big decisions in the supply chain is key right now. And I think that from my role as CEO and moving the company into that field, which is now so perfectly aligned with our vision, I think it's going to be a great and exciting job. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, to, to, to that point, I remember last year I was at a conference and there was a young professional who just came out of university. And she said the reason she decided to work uh, in the supply chain logistics field is that she knew that every day she would come to work and it would be a different day. Yes. Right. There was just because of all the change and all the excitement happening in the industry. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very innovative industry at the moment. It's, a, like I said, an exciting industry, but not only the supply chain itself is different every day, but what you see right now is certainly for companies like ours, the, the way we address the supply chain, the way we address supply chain technology is changing very rapidly. Um, and as we are coming to what I would, let's say, refer to as the, the truffles desperation of the uh, big data and getting, let's say, it actually to make it useful, I think we can, we can add some, uh, contribute uh, significant benefits there. You know, it's obvious from the, you know, the great turnout that we have here at, at the event that achieving optimum supply chain performance or rethinking mm -hmm. your optimum was, it was a great choice for, for a conference theme. You know, what made you select that as the conference theme and what do you think it kind of resonated with, you know, so many executives? Okay. Good question. So I think what we find is that, that for a lot of companies, they're, they're still thinking whether they are doing the right thing, right? You see that the, the industry around us, the consumer around us is changing constantly. So we realize that companies need to revisit their optimum every now and then. And then it's not only about optimizing your supply chain, it's also about optimizing, are you still delivering the right stuff to your customers? Are you still being relevant to your customers? We believe that a company should revisit the way they do business and as such rethink their optimum every now and then and to make sure that they do not only supply their supply chain is not only optimized but also that they indeed like i said remain relevant to their customer by changing their business model uh, every now and then to align with the different uh, expectations of their consumer you know past performance is no guarantee of mm -hmm. future success right so what was optimum five years ago, ten years ago, may not be optimum today. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. so what, what the business model was of a company a few years ago is no longer the same as it is today. Right? With, with the advent of mobile technology, it's not only that we now have all have a mobile device, but we have, let's say, as a company, you now have a conduit into your consumer. You have an ability to communicate with your consumer in real time. Customers should use that ability in their supply chain to be able to uh, align expectations of their consumers with their ability to deliver. So why use the traditional means of, of only pushing towards your customer? You actually have, you should set up a, a pool supply chain also towards your, your end customer. Um, you know, in your keynote address this morning, I mean, you touched upon a lot of, you know, different topics, but the one that resonated with, you know, the most with me was how you, you link together big data, analytics, optimization in helping companies make big decisions and mm -hmm. smarter, uh, you know, decisions. Um, you know, how is this playing out in kind of the key functional areas that, that Quintic specializes in, such as workforce management, transport, you know, transportation logistics, and in manufacturing? Yeah, I think there, what you'll find is that actually in all three areas, there is an enormous amount of data available. And uh, what I try to put, bring across is that it's not only about having big data, it's not only about analyzing big data, but it's actually making sure that you take the output of that big data analytics and start making better decisions with it. So it's indeed, as you mentioned, it's from big data into big decisions. If you look, for instance, at the workforce uh, arena, we have a number of airline ground operators here at uh, the convention today, uh, and you'll find that, uh, that availability of flight data, on the one hand, is, is, is huge learning from that flight data, what does that mean for your ground crew, what does it mean for your ground stewardesses, what does it mean for your service level towards your customer, that is the big next step. And then making sure that you make the right decisions to have the right staff at the right time. Same thing of course holds for logistics. 
way I see the market of logistics going away from the next week to tomorrow, but it actually goes to next day, to today's delivery, the same day delivery. The only way you can do same day delivery is you have if you actually know what's coming. Otherwise, your trucks are going to be in the wrong location. You're going to hand off the wrong slots. So we need to make sure that we use the big data that we have available from all of our retailers and all of our logistics providers and, and start predicting where uh, that we need to deliver. And at th that point in the time, we can have the truck, the van, at the right time, at the right customer to give them the same day delivery experience they're looking for. So in all, all of our industries, we see that, that we have the data available. We now we need to make sure that we start making smart decisions with them instead of just having a lot of data. Right, and I think one of the other one of the other points is that you know I think historically companies have made decisions in a very fragmented mm -hmm. manner, right? Because we operated in silos, and the and the technology was in silos. Uh, do, do you see the rise of let's say cloud computing and the power that that presents to be able to now analyze, to put it in Quintix mm -hmm. terminology, more complex supply chain puzzles, the ability yeah. to solve more complex supply chain puzzles? Yeah. Yeah, the cloud is one of the, uh, the, let's say, the new technologies that we see, and it, it allows for, for larger data aggregation, it allows for much more computing power, it allows also for being able to solve the puzzle anywhere, so no longer only in the office on-premise, but indeed on mobile devices anywhere in the world, so people no longer have to be together to make the decision. They can actually be across the world while making decisions using the power of the cloud, the availability of the cloud, uh, and, and going forward. But not only pure cloud, it's also the social aspect, right? So we see a, a lot of our companies are, are adding social aspects to their decision-making process because you want to make sure that you have the right decision, you want to make sure that you have the right empowerment to make decisions, but on the other hand, you want to make sure that the organization understands and supports the decision-making process. And that's where the concept of social uh, in the business now uh, adds value by keeping people informed and allowing people to contribute without all having to be in the same room. Talking about rethinking your optimum, optimum. Uh, I think that holds true to how we communicate and collaborate as well. I think that the days of sending emails to 25 people with a bunch of attachments um, has to give way to kind of leveraging more social technology, which yeah. is a much more efficient and cla and, and um, scalable way to yeah. communicate and collaborate. Yeah, and in that sales sense, looking forward, we see a lot of companies moving a little bit away from the hierarchical uh, model into a more social model, uh, where you indeed empower individuals to make decisions, but use the capabilities of technology to make sure that everybody is informed and everybody contributes to the decision-making process. Uh, and again, so one of the technologies that Quintix software can help you use, um, uh, not only take the, uh, the big data and analytics, but also put that into the concept of the company uh, in, the, in the future. Yeah, so one of my, my key takeaways from, from your talk this morning was that if you're still using spreadsheets, if you're still using whiteboards, or manual processes, it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to make big decisions, smarter decisions moving forward. You need to realize as a company, if, if this is the way you do business, uh, you need to realize that somebody else is not. Right? So somebody within your industry is making that change. They are rethinking their optimum. Uh, and it's going to be, uh, let's say, is it them that are going to make the change and, and, and be the next innovator in the industry? Uh, or is it you? And I think uh, if you are still seeing yourself in, in whiteboards and Excel sheets, then right now it's not you. And I think that's the moment you need to rethink your optimum and, and move towards the technology so you can actually be part of the new economy. You know, you have many uh, clients in the food and beverage industry. I mean, what are some of the you know, supply chain puzzles that they're trying to overcome in order to achieve optimum supply chain performance? And how is Quintic helping them get there? So one of the interesting parts of the food and beverage industry is that it's the perishability of the product. Right, so where traditional supply chain products use partly a push, partly a pull mechanism through the supply chain, um, they did not realize that if you let some products leave in some locations for too long, uh, they may actually uh, go away. And, it, and that's the difference within the food and beverage industry. If you take food and, and you put it in the wrong location for the too, too much of a time, it perishes and the product is no longer there. And it's not only a big loss, of course, of in productivity and a loss in investment, there's actually a loss in customer satisfaction because you can no longer service your customer. So the food and beverage industry is potentially more, even more interesting supply chain than any other one because it takes all the classical supply chain puzzles of having your inventory at the right location, but now adds a product that actually disappears if you don't consume it. Uh, and, and that actually makes that you need to... Uh, even, let's say, more detailed look at all the decisions you're making and, and that big decisions become even more important. So you have many clients in the air and transport you know, industry. I mean, what kind of supply chain puzzles 
uh, are they you know trying to solve and, and how is Quintic helping them you know trying to help them achieve optimum supply chain performance so the interesting part about the the airport and, and transportation uh, experiences is, is that they're also dealing with a, a new set of customer a customer that is highly demanding and, and experiencing a very customized product while uh, requiring that at a let's say mass cons mass produced cost so uh, imagine yourself, you're, you're traveling around the world. If you go to an airport, you actually expect security to be light. Why? Because they knew you were coming. So you need to make sure that you as a frequent traveler have all the services. You expect the plane to be there on time. Even though in all kinds of situations, there's disruptions everywhere. As a so, supply chain specialist in that arena, in the, the widest sense of the word, making sure that the right resource against the right demand, you need to make sure that you can actually deliver upon a, let's say, a st stable product in a very highly dynamic environment. You need to be able to predict when you need to have the right demand. You need to predict when you have the right skill sets and get those people there on the same time. Then because you're actually scheduling people, it's actually a little bit complex even further. Like a machine doesn't actually complain when we are working them hard. People uh, have, have additional rules and, and, and restrictions to take place. So you need to make sure that, you, again, you can get that uh, employee satisfaction capability while delivering to a very highly specialized and dynamic environment. Uh, a very interesting environment, very interesting puzzles. Uh, I think great for, uh, for supply chain specialists with, given the dynamics and the, uh, and the high expectations. So you have uh, you know many clients in the in the oil and gas uh, industry. Um, you know how, what kind of supply chain puzzles and challenges are, are companies in, the, in that industry dealing with, and how is Quintec helping them achieve optimum supply chain performance? The interesting part about the oil and gas is that, from uh, let's say our perspective, it's a lot about logistics, getting the right product at the right time uh, where there is demand. Having a certain product in a location where there is demand effectively is a huge cost for these industries. The fluctuation in the price of oil and, and fuel uh, makes that they have an enormous exposure if they have too much inventory. So uh, on the one hand, the industry is, uh, is seeking for very, very low inventory levels. On the other hand, of course, the, the news that your petrol station runs out of petrol and there's cars in queues because there's no petrol, of course, is completely unacceptable. So that balance is a, is a, a very interesting one. And there, the oil and gas industry is potentially even more complex than the traditional supply chain industry because of the value of their, their product. And, and potentially also the replaceability of the product. You can sell them a premium product for a, for a, let's say, a normal price. Well, of course, you're, you're, you're losing major margin uh, by very product replacement. Uh, so making sure that you constantly balance that demand uh, and the inventory levels, uh, knowing that prices may either go up, in which case you want to have more uh, inventory, or down, in which case you wanted to get rid of your inventory, uh, it's a constant challenge for this industry, and, and, and as such, it's very good for the technology that we provide. So you, you have many uh, you know, clients you know, that are involved in crew and, and fleet planning. Um, what kind of supply chain puzzles are they kind of, you know, trying to solve, and, and how is Quintic helping them achieve optimum supply chain performance? It's a completely different set of supply chain. It's no longer uh, getting a product from A to B. It's actually making sure you have the right crew in the right aircraft uh, at the right time. Uh, because, again, the, the product is extremely expensive. Uh, and it's a, it's a very high service-oriented industry. So you need to make sure that you always provide the right service. But getting the right people there is always a challenge. And then, of course, if you look at, for instance, uh, as an example, once a pilot is, is reclassified into an aircraft, he effectively loses his certifications for a different type of aircraft. So a decision to move an, a, a pilot for one type of aircraft to another type of aircraft is a very, very big one and, and, and will influence your profitability for years to come. Uh, so looking forward, uh, one of the major challenges that we see is where do you position your pilots and which aircraft type and going forward. But the same, of course, holds for, for the bodies. Well, which, which, airline, which aircraft do you want to position where? Because moving an aircraft from A to B, again, is a very expensive challenge. And all of this in a, in a very high demanding uh, industry. Uh, the customer demands on the airlines are enormous. It's, it's delays are immediately being compensated by, by charges. Uh, and every customer is actually looking for that last minute uh, ticket to actually get to the business meeting right in time. Uh, and they need to challenge that or to provide all of that with, uh, with very limited resources in a very competitive market. So a very interesting industry for us.